Good afternoon, Fiber friends, and welcome to another Friday Financial Fiber with your blind crochet fiber artist host, Mo of Unseen Strands. So guys, guess what day it is? That's right, it's Payday Friday! Yay! <laughs> now, the sad thing was when I looked at my husband's check, it was actually less than the one he got at the beginning of the year. I don't know if that still had some of that health insurance uh, change on it, but I mean, it was still more than his checks used to be, just not as much as that last check was. But I forgot that it's bonus check month, so we had an extra little bonus. So bonus. So overall, it was a lot higher than I was expecting. I mean, not hugely over. His bonus check was a little more than two hundred and fifty dollars. But guess what, guys? <laughs> I may have gone and already spent that. Yeah. So if you didn't know, Honey Bee Knits has decided that she was going to quit selling yarn or at least quit dyeing yarn for the foreseeable future as she is going into kind of family planning for her new focus for at least this next coming year. And so I knew she was going to quit dyeing stuff at the end of last year. I guess that she has now decided that with all the stock that is left, she put it on I think originally a 20 or 25 percent discount and then I looked today and it was down to a 30 percent discount so guess who went shopping guys with that bonus check <laughs> now I don't normally do that but I knew that her stuff was supposed to be being marked down but when I had checked probably a week ago or so she actually had not put anything on sale in the shop or at least I couldn't figure out how it was on sale so I was just checking to see if things had actually gotten marked down or not and found that it had gone down to 30% and I decided that since a couple of the sock yarns only had one left in stock or had more people with it in their cart than there was skeins left that I needed to go ahead and make my purchase and so I got a lot of yarn. I did not spend that entire bonus check but I spent a good portion of it. <laughs> Uh, but my husband understands because, you know, when these dyers stop dying, it's like your only opportunity to get that, or your last opportunity to get that yarn, at least not in some kind of de stashy way. So I ended up with, well, I have five full skeins of yarn. I got a set of minis, which I believe was five minis. So if you're going by the stash to hound 2020 thing over on Fiberkind. I have added, what is that, five and five. I've added 20 points to my score. <laughs> oh, that's, that's pretty bad because luckily I don't have to count the fiber in there, but each skein, so a mini skein by itself is one. Um, the mini skein set I got was like reactive dyes and they're supposed to be UV light activated or something, I think. I think that was the description of the ones that I got. Um, so I just wanted those just because I wanted that because it was something different that I hadn't seen before. And yeah, so I got those six or ten because it was six listings, but technically ten skeins of yarn if you count a mini as a whole skein. And then I got eight things of fiber. There were some more fiber colors, but I kind of had to cut myself off. <clears throat> But paying ten fifty for a three and a half to four gra four ounces, which is about a hundred approximately grams of fiber that's hand dyed, is not a bad price at all. So I wanted to make sure to kind of stock up on those, especially since they are the hand dyed ones. So that is something you really won't be able to get, even if she does start dying again. It's not something that she'll probably redo those colorways because they will look completely different from you know batch to batch and so forth so i kind of splurged a little bit on this friday this is my accountability stream so i will admit to you guys that i splurged she was going to be the person that i was going to spend for my january uh hand dyed person that i was going to focus on but i did spend a lot more than I was originally anticipating on spending in her shop. On the bright side though, we did have a little money left over that I didn't need from this last paycheck. So overall, it's still in the plus territory. 
but I would like to get that money to go towards like paying down the house payment possibly in the future and we need to start saving money aside for our summer vacation plans although that honestly will probably be at a tax return we did start also looking into summer vacation plans uh, which was what I was going to talk about today <laughs> <laughs> but then I had to go and yeah spend the bonus check so I thought I needed to share that with you since that is fibery goodness uh, but yeah so what we're looking at right now and the reason we started looking into summer vacation planning was because our ideal vacation time would be like in June but the thing that we told the kids that we would aim to do this summer it looks like since that would take like an entire week process it's not going to be till later on in the summer because I have Iowa sheep and wool I'm not willing to not go to that <laughs> it's like that's my Iowa event so I need to kind of be there and help support that and then earlier in that month so the very end of May and the beginning of June there is a thing called Cisco Live it is in Las Vegas this year and I'm really hoping that my husband gets to go so I told him that we kind of need to plan that our June is kind of off the table because putting a February event towards Father's Day and then this thing where he will be out of the house for approximately an entire week well work week out of our house to go to this educational thing for him for work it's just like that is a lot to jam into one month by itself and putting anything on those odd weeks is just gonna make a vacation feel super pushed since this vacation would take an entire week also by itself so that was kind of why we were looking at uh, vacation stuff was kind of trying to see how much of this little vacation plan we had was going to cost just if you're curious we are planning on taking the kids to Cedar Point which is in Ohio and that's the big theme park with big I think it was 18 roller coasters and so I kind of want to enjoy our time there and so yeah we wanted to be able to go and able to do that but of course that means there's money that we need to set aside for that vacation plan and as a little side note I kept telling my husband that we need to push it off till the end of July so that we would be heading back over to Iowa on the weekend that Stitches Midwest would be taking place now I have no idea if that's gonna work out or not but how awesome would that be if I could hit Stitches Midwest on my way back from family vacation time I mean that would just be super awesome at least for me <laughs> Anyways, guys, that is your financial fiber kind of all over the place this week, but your financial fiber for what is today, the 17th of January. And if you like these little financial Friday financial fiber segments, please hook the like button and subscribe. Talk to you later, guys.